Swarovski's theory of foregrounding. Several questions will be answered in our today's topic, such as What is Mokarovsky's theory of foregrounding? What are the examples of foregrounding in stylistics? Why do writers use foregrounding or why foregrounding is important? And how do writers use foregrounding? To begin with, I want you to look at this picture and decide which of the following two titles would be more appropriate for it. Kindly type the letter of your answer in our chat page. Letter A. Is it a forest with a house in it? Or is it a house in a forest? Later on, 
translated by Paul Marvin in English. According to Mukarovsky, in 1964, foregrounding is the range of stylistic effects that occur in literature, whether at phonetic level, such as alliteration and rhyme, the grammatical level, such as inversion and ellipsis, or the semantic level, such as metaphor and irony. While Holiday on 1977 defined foregrounding as the phenomenon of linguistic highlighting, whereby some features of the language of a text stand out in some way. While Yao and Cooking on 1994 refer foregrounding to a stylistic variation that evokes feelings and prolongs reading time. The latest definition came from Nordquist in 2020. According to him, in literary studies and stylistics, foregrounding is a linguistic strategy of calling attention to certain language features to shift the reader's attention from what is said to how it is said. In short, foregrounding is the practice of making something stand out from the surrounding words or images. The writer uses sounds or words in such a way that the reader's attention is immediately captivated. Mukarovsky also pointed out that foregrounding may occur in normal languages such as spoken discourse or journalistic prose, but it occurs at random with no systematic design. Now, let us move to aspects of foregrounding. Foregrounding has two aspects. These are the qualitative aspect and the quantitative aspect, according to Leach and Short in 2007. Let us differentiate qualitative aspect and quantitative aspect. Qualitative aspect is the deviation from the language code itself, a breach of some linguistic norm. While quantitative aspect involves the deviation of some expected frequency. Under the qualitative aspect, we have the deviation. While under the quantitative aspect, we have the parallelism. Deviation belongs to the qualitative type of foregrounding. It can be realized through different stylistic devices. Deviation means doing something different from what people consider to be normal or acceptable. Deviation also means the breaking of rules or expectation which others obey. Like the way I changed the font size or font style of this text. This deviation from expectation produces the effect of foregrounding, which attracts attention and aids memorability. There are various types of deviation. These are lexical deviation, grammatical deviation, phonological deviation, graphological deviation, semantic deviation, and dialectal deviation. I think I do not have to elaborate more on deviation and its type because Ms. Ligon and Ms. Narvaez had already discussed those concepts with us last time. Instead, let us have a review of those concepts. I will present examples, then you will identify what type of deviation is used in each example by typing the letter of your answer in our chat pane. Are you ready? So let's start. The first example Correct. This is an example of grammatical deviation. 
How about the second example? Excellent! This is an example of lexical deviation. And finally, of phonological deviation. Do you still remember this example given by Dr. Rosales with us last time? E. e. Cummings is known for using various types of deviation to catch his reader's attention. This time, let's have parallelism. Parallelism is associated with a quantitative type of foregrounding. It involves the repetition of sentence structure and some words in several sentences, balancing each other. I want you to take note of these examples. Example 1, no parallelism. And example 2, with parallelism. Parallelism may occur at all language levels such as phonological, syntactic, morphological, etc. Example is this one, which is an excerpt from T.S. Eliot, Ash Wednesday. Because I do not hope to join again. Because I do not. Because I do not hope to join. Another example is this. Blow, blow, the wind to me by Shakespeare as you like it. Another example is this. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. In this example, wounded and bruised are intended to be viewed in the same way. Same as transgressions and iniquities. Sometimes the effect of repeated praise in a poem will be to emphasize a development or change by means of the contrasting words following the identical patterns. More examples are this. Parallelism in prose aims basically the two things. First, reinforcing ideas of importance and making the text more pleasurable to the reader. We are naturally musical by nature and are sensitive to rhythm. Not only do we notice rhythmical patterns, but we also enjoy them. Thus, a passage imbued with parallelism is enjoyable and memorable. I hope you learned something on our today's topic about Mukarovsky's theory of foregrounding. Thank you for your time and participation. Have a nice day ahead!